Welcome to this short presentation on understanding risk assessments and child safeguarding statements. The Children First Act 2015 requires most organizations which provide services for children to write a child safeguarding statement or CSS for short. You can check Schedule 1 of the Children First Act to see if this applies to your service. There are some things you must include in your child safeguarding statement. You can find general information about what has to be in a child safeguarding statement in the first video in this series, What is a Child Safeguarding Statement? All child safeguarding statements must include a risk assessment. This is not a health and safety risk assessment. It does not focus on slips, trips, and falls. For your CSS, you are assessing the risk of harm as defined in the Children First Act to a child while they are with you. So what does this mean? In the Children First Act, harm has a specific meaning. It means assault, ill treatment, or neglect of a child in a manner that seriously affects or is likely to seriously affect the child's health development or welfare or sexual abuse of the child. Harm can be caused by a single incident, by failing to do something, or by a series or combination of things. As the Children First National Guidance for the Protection and Welfare of Children says, risk in this context is the risk of abuse. So you're trying to identify or assess situations or risks where a child could potentially be harmed while at your service. TUSLA's Guidance on Developing a Child Safeguarding Statement gives some good advice on how you can start your risk assessment. It says you should start by thinking about your organization's structure, the activities you run, and who uses your service. Think about who or what might cause harm to the children or young people using your service. You should involve different people in your organization, including children, when doing your risk assessment. Different people will have different ideas of what a risk is. Your risk assessment must clearly show that it relates to the risk of harm to a child as defined in the Children First Act 2015. You might state at the beginning of your risk assessment that this is the definition being used, or you might choose to list each risk as a risk of harm as defined in the Children First Act. However you decide to write your risk assessment, the risks listed should clearly identify what the risk of harm is. Some general areas that it might be useful to think about include the risk of harm as defined in the Children First Act of a child by a member of staff or volunteer from things they, they have done, for example, hurt a child or failed to do, such as not reporting a concern. The risk of harm caused by a lack of supervision, the risk of harm caused by a visitor to the service, like workers or parents or students on placement, risk of harm by another child in the service, the risk of harm to a child on outings by a member of staff, a volunteer, stranger, or peer, risk of harm through access to ICT, such as social media or web access, electronic contacts, or the risk of harm to a child from the use or misuse of digital images. There may be other areas of risk specific to the activities you provide or the children who use your service. Some services might choose to include reference to the risk of harm from severe bullying or discrimination or other risks in their risk assessment. When writing your risk assessment, it is important to be clear about what the risk of harm to a child while they are with you is. For example, listing recruitment would not be a risk of harm. Instead, risk of harm to a child by a member of staff would clearly show the risks. Once you have identified the risks, you need to identify or develop procedures to reduce the risks. These procedures could be used to reduce the likelihood of the risk occurring or to reduce the impact of the risk should it occur. For example, in relation to the risk of harm to a child from a member of staff, your recruitment procedures would be one way you reduce the likelihood of this risk occurring. 
The risk and associated procedures should be listed in your risk assessment to show what procedures are in place to address which risks. While protecting children from abuse is one part of safeguarding, children and young people also need safeguarding in order for them to grow, develop, and achieve their full potential. Your CSS and its risk assessment are there to help support the best possible outcomes for the children and young people in your care. The Children First Act 2015 does not require you to use any particular method to carry out your risk assessment. It only requires that you do. Remember, the purpose of the risk assessment is to help you provide as safe a place for children as possible. You should also remember the risk assessment is part of your child safeguarding statement. It must be included in the body of the statement. Services can include an amalgamated list of the main risks identified and develop a more detailed secondary risk assessment document. Where a secondary risk assessment document is developed, this must be noted on the CSS and provided with the CSS whenever it is requested. If you have further questions or need more information on child safeguarding statements, you can contact the Child Safeguarding Statement Compliance Unit. You can also find more information on the TUSLA website, www.tusla.ie. We hope you have found this presentation useful. Thank you for watching.